Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna be comparing translation to KitKat and how to avoid the the harmful things uh, effects that can come from either of those from translation in learning a language and from eating KitKat and living a healthy life, basically. Um, Many students end up asking me whether I think that translation is never good or that it can always be um, used. And of course, the answer is neither. Neither of those options. Not always and not never, probably as well. It's like um, <clears throat> you need to know how translation works and what are the effects of translation on you and on your learning in order to make informed decisions about how to use it, when to use it, why you're using it, and maybe most importantly, what do you expect from that after having used it? What is your expectation? Do you expect to never forget that word ever again and to never uh, want to translate that again? Or <clears throat> you hope that by knowing the exact translation, then you will actually, that you will actually um, know how to use it in whatever context. And yeah, it's not that simple. So today we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about ways to possibly avoid translation and leave translation as a last resort or a well-informed uh, resource that you can use. <clears throat> so I'm going to make myself little again. There we go. And... Um, here I do have um, an Italiano thing. I'm going to actually yeah, show everything on this recording. So I need to do this. Okay. So I have this um, a, a document for Italian, which is the language that I have been learning um, on and off, not having a lot of discipline. So I still don't know many things. It's actually the perfect language for this particular exercise. And here I do have the Google Translate tool from Portuguese to Italian, which I may use and then you will see what are the consequences of using it for my, at least the consequences that I want for myself. Um, and then here I have uh, a few other websites that will help me not use translation. And one of them is phrase it. Uh, what am I doing? What did I do? What have I done? <laughs> Past is complicated in English. Uh, phrase it. So yeah. Phrase it is a website that allows you to look up words and then get example sentences and pictures and uh, video excerpts saying exactly that thing that you looked up. Um, and definitions and even translations if you want. But let's explore it a little bit for Italian. So I want to say something. Um, Mi sono alzato alle uh, sette e mezza oggi. Mi sono alzato alle sette e mezza. <clears throat> I have, uh, I woke up at seven and a half. I think this is correct. But the thing about producing things of your own in a language sometimes is that you are afraid of uh, perpetuating mistakes or you're afraid of thinking that something is right when actually it's not. So, and it's okay to want to do that and not care. But sometimes you do care and sometimes you have this um, itch, I need to know. And, uh, and then probably what many students do is they will go straight to the Google Translate 
option. <clears throat> and it works for that, for confirming whether something is working or not. But there are, in my opinion, richer ways of doing this. So I can just type in here, misonualtsatom, and see if it, if it gives me something so that I know if that's correct. And then I get example sentences. L'acqua fresca mi faceva bene, mi sono alzato, ma tremavo ancora forte. Ah, mi sono alzato dal letto. Ah, and then here I can actually get extra language that I wouldn't be using, but then here I'm having ideas. So, non mi sono alzato dal letto per un mese. Okay, so dal letto. And then here I can reinforce something else. Mi sono alzato dal letto alle sette e mezza. And then I don't know if siete, sette, sette. Let's look it up. Dalla sette. Ah, alla sette, maybe. Nono giorno di sciopero della sette e della fame. Le sette. Ah, uh, this is not seven. <laughs> Sette. Ah, maybe it's thirst. Sorry about the dogs. How about siete? But that would be Spanish. Che siete stati? Yeah, I know that you have been siete stati. You guys have been... Uh, alle sette? Mmm... Dai rasi lucenti al cifon al cacemire alle sette. Mi mescolano alle sette. Mm. How about double T? Oh, and this is it. Invece è stilata ora dopo ora. Ora dopo ora. Fino alle sette di sera. Alle sette. Di sera, alle sette e mezza, e mezza. Uh, due ore e mezza, circa. Oh, and then here I see circa. I can use circa in mind because it was not exactly at seven. It was around seven and a half. So, here. So you see my point, by, by not using translation, by using other ways of confirming whether something that you did was right or wrong, this changes your relationship with the language and this teaches you that confirming or making sure that something is right is or can also be an opportunity for learning more, for um, strengthening things that you thought you didn't have, but maybe you did, because I do understand these, because I have seen these things, uh, da letto, circa, <clears throat> but here, um, yeah, I'm having extra ideas that I didn't have, but they are real. I did wake up from bed at around seven and a half, so that's completely right. I just hadn't had, hadn't had that idea before, and you have promised that at the same time I would be asleep, asleep to greet you. A bunch of things that I have no idea what they mean. I don't know. Lit. Quattro e mezza c'è stata una grande esplosione. Ok, esplosione. With S. Like in Portuguese. Like in English. Anyway. Um, here I have a random word website, which is um, when I have no idea about what to write, then I may come in here and... Uh, the word here is lingua, language, which is nice. And then here I found uh, a website with um, 
111 verbs in Italian. Uh, so also, instead of going, coming here and typing alzato, I can come here and look it up. Alzare, alzare, alzarsi, al... Oh, it's not here. Anyway, so then we can look it up. Uh, alzare, alzare verbo coniu, coniugazione. Alzare. Um, alzare, alzare, alzare. Maybe it's not written this way. Alzarsi, alzarsi. Why? Coniugare, alzarsi, italiano. Io mi alzo. It's a reflexive verb. And this is why we have me here. Io mi alzo. So also in the past, mi sono alzato. Uh, and then I can also create something from this. Uh, mi alzo. Uh, del solito. Alle sei e mezza. And then here I have this really beginner question about numbers. Alle sei. Uh, dalla mezzanotte alle sei. Le pubblicità che ti fanno vedere già alle sei di mattina il sole. No, no, è buio, fa freddo, c'è la nebbia, quando alza da parola dice... And here we also have example videos. You can just click next and it's gonna show something that has that. Mente in grado di accettare il diverso, perché poi la mattina quando te ti svegli alle 6 e quell'altra si sveglia alle 10 e mezza. Quando ti svegli agli, alle 6, svegliarsi, levantar, to get up. No, 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 alzarsi, to get up. Svegliarsi, to wake up. Uh, so here, maybe I could also use um, a different one. Mi sono svegliato. Mi sono svegliato. Mi sveglio. Mi sveglio del solito alle sei e mezza. Del solito. I know that this looks like a lot of time, right? Uh, you're spending a lot of time on this, but it's worth it for learning. It's definitely worth it for learning uh, the language and for becoming autonomous in dealing with the language and dealing with the, with the nuances of the language and the possibilities of it. So maybe I can come here and I can look at verbs and then I can, um, have new ideas about what has happened in my day because sometimes the things that happen are not in the language world. They are in the action, mechanical, uh, visual, uh, sensual world. And they only become words if we think about them. And sometimes... In language learning, you need to force certain things to become words, because if you don't force them into becoming words, then they will not become words. Someone will have to show them to you. Um, but becoming autonomous in learning is about you finding your own mechanisms for um, investigating language and um, attracting everything that you need from it. So... Cuocere, cucinare. Um, I haven't cooked anything. I just made a sandwich. Um, no, no, cucinato niente or nulla. I don't know. Ma 
ho fatto un sandwich so i don't know if sandwich i think they do use the english word sandwich belle parole oops uomini sandwich due panelli panelli sandwich un uomo sandwich uomo sandwich e ancora sandwich golosi offrendogli un sandwich della sua marca preferita ok i think it's ok non ho cucinato niente cucinato niente mm, nothing all right maybe nulla And maybe colpevole di non averli cucinato nulla per cena. Hmm. Let's yeah, I think that's more right. In realtà non ho cucinato nulla perché c'era già pronto il purè che ha fatto mia mamma ieri che non ho mangiato. Quindi ne ho avanzato un sacco e lo sto scaldando. Magari dalla faccia non sembra che sia. Ne ho avanzato un sacco il purè. Per farvi vedere quello che La luce è stranissima per la colazione presto. Giù uno stacca. Yeah, so she did say non ho cucinato nulla. Um, there's only one video with that that this site was able to retrieve because they of course they don't index everything on the internet and on youtube um all right um, mm. ho domandato qualcosa ai miei whatever guys you get the idea from this i think and here i have a website with uh um dei verbi italiani regolari, irregolari più comuni. So sometimes just skimming through it um, is enough for you to get ideas or investigate a little bit more. Abbandonare, accogliere, aggiungere, ammazzare. Um, hmm. I tried to open the door and it was not opening. Uh, Cer ho cercato di aprire and I don't know if that's double P probably uh, ho cercato di aprire la porta questa mattina e non sono riuscito mm, and I couldn't I wasn't able to e non sono riuscito riuscito a farlo a farlo to do it I didn't manage to do it ho cercato di aprire so here we come we could come to um, aprire ah, one one p And then you can quickly review actually the conjugation. Io apri, aprirò, aprirai, apriremo, apriremo, aprirete, aprirete, apriranno. Io aprivo, tu aprivi, aprivia, aprivamo, 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 aprivano. Hmm. Ok, ok, apriamo, aprite, voi aprite, 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 apri, 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 aprite, all right. Huh. And then here, synonyms and opposite, uh, aprire, um, chiudere, I think, aprire, The opposite should be chiudere. Sinonimi. E dove sono dei antonimi? Contrari, chiudere, ok, bloccare, tappare, 
finire, concludere, chiudersi, tacere. Huh. Ok. La porta. Questa mattina e sono riuscito a farlo. Sono riuscito. Sono riuscito a farlo, da farlo. Sono riuscito a finalizzare, a. Sono riuscito a non perdere troppo, ad arrivare. Here it's an F, ok. All right. So now, let's suppose that you are tired of this. I want this no more. Um, looking things up all the time takes too long and it's uh, energy draining and I... Okay. <laughs> then you can uh, use translation, but let's see what happens then. Um, I tried to use the... I tried to open the door, but I couldn't because uh, there was a problem. C'era un problema, uh, which I know how to say in Italian. Um, a fechadura, the thing that I don't know in English as well. A fechadura estava com problemas. And I don't know how to say fechadura. And let's see in English. A fechadura da porta. The door lock, okay, I knew that. Knew but didn't know. Hmm, this is something that happens a lot. Um, okay, so let's go back to Italian. A fechadura da porta. La serratura della porta. La serratura. Had a problem. Era problema, po, problematica. Uh, stava con problema. Era difettosa. Era difettosa. Era difettosa. Ok. So, in this text, the consequence for having used the translator is then that I will uppercase it. I need to make it clear that that part didn't come to me through research, through um, um, assimilation, through association, through, yeah. You know, right? I think those are two different kinds of uh, checking, two different kinds of uh, learning even, because I'm learning from this. Um, I do believe that I would have to make more examples with these two in the future in order to really get hold of them, which is something that I may not need to do so much with the things that came to me from research, uh, because those things are, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting them back. It's like they were with me at some point and I'm getting them back. Uh, for example, um, circa and uh, da letto, nulla and all of those things, you know. Um, and um, the translation is a different thing, so then I, maybe I can do some other examples uh, with this, um, and then maybe I can actually change the language that I. La serratura è... ha bisogno di essere um, cambiata. La fecitura precisa essere trocata. The lock needs to be exchanged. Ok. Um, and then let's la struttura deve essere cambiata and then I can change the language again in order to see how it 
because the translation to Portuguese was good. And then I want to know ex if exactly that, how does that translate then to Italian uh, the way that Google translate things about it. And yes, dev is more common than abisogno di, um, or at least I hear it more. So, so then I will, la serratura deve essere cambiata. Why am I not translating the rest? Why am I not uppercasing the rest? Because these things now came from me. Here it hadn't come from me, but here it did come directly from me in a way, right? But this one didn't. This one is something that Google Translate is giving to me for free. And I need to... And I need to do something about it. Um, and then maybe with difetosa. Um, and then I'm going to change again. Uh, miei, oops, miei auricolari sono difetosi. Difetosi. Meus fones de ouvido estão com defeito. Exactly. Le mie cuffie sono difetose. Ok. So here it's giving me another word for auricolari uh, that may be more common. And uh, so I'll get that one. Le. Because I started with mie. But maybe in Italian you would do it differently. Le mie cuffie sono difettose. It's changing an E because it's a... Uh, it's changing to E because it's a uh, female, it's a... Uh, yeah. Okay, so... I guess you get the, the hang of it, right? Um, Keep using this button, guys, a lot when you're translating. Do use that. If you are translating, then use the translator productively and uppercase so that you know, so that you don't fool your brain into thinking that you have everything in the same level. Because if you don't differentiate your productions or the little parts of your productions, then yeah, I think that you do fool your brain into having these wrong assumptions about the quality of your language, about the extent of your language, about the um, autonomy of your language. And I don't think that's ever a good thing. I think that the, the more you know about your actual language, then the more control you have um, and, and and maybe more importantly the the more you feel the more comfortable you feel about how much you know because you know exactly exactly how much you don't know and you know the levels of knowing and not knowing so you don't feel bad i will not feel bad for forgetting serratura <clears throat> again but i have created uh, extra experiences after having learned this word. I have created this experience and and then difetose and then this connects to that, that connects to that and so it's not just translation. Um, yeah, so probably for new vocabulary it's a good thing but if you want to just check other kinds of things then you can use lists for new vocabulary too piovere, terrain, and then maybe I can see something that I don't know. Scendere, scendere. I think it's to go down. Let's check if scendere is to go down. Scendere, scendere, scendere. And you keep pronouncing it. L'ho um, lasciato passare e poi ho cominciato a scendere anch'io. 
qual è l'emozione che si prova a scendere a certe profondità? Scendere a certe profondità. So yes, to go down to certain depths. So here I am confirming the meaning of that. And this is great as well. Okay, um, thank you very much. And I hope that you use these strategies to strengthen your learning and strengthen uh, your resilience in language learning. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> and I said that I would uh, make connections with KitKat. Apparently I didn't. Apparently I forgot. Apparently I got carried away by the video, but I can do it. Translating is sort of like eating Kit Kat or any kind of candy. Um, you feel that you have a need to eat some chocolate. Um, many times it's not a real need. Uh, you will not die. You're not starving. Um, your life will not change if you eat the Kit Kat or not. Um, your day might not change much, but you feel like you need it and you will go after it um, and then you buy it and then you have some of it and then you feel an instant pleasure and an instant satisfaction and this is what happens with translation. You go and translate and many times what you think is, oh, I knew that, yeah. That's so easy, I knew that, or, oh, of course I know that. So I think that these are wrong assumptions about how well the language is settled in you. It's not that settled, but you're having the impression that it is settled or that it is completely right. Um, just like when you're having the Kit Kat and you, yeah, you're sure that's exactly what you needed because it's so tasty and it makes so much sense, I guess. Um, but then <clears throat> you cannot keep eating Kit Kats all the time. You cannot keep eating one Kit Kat maybe a day or two Kit Kats a day. You need to balance things out. You need to make them healthier because you don't want to feel like a Kit Kat eater. It's not going to give you what you need. And translation alone is not going to give you what you need just as well, I think. It is something that sometimes you'll do, but there must be costs associated with it. For the Kit Kat example, maybe a cost would be, oh, I will go to the gym today. I mean, I had a Kit Kat. I need to go to the gym. I cannot miss the gym today. Or I will have a healthier lunch. I will eat a lot of salad to compensate for all the fat and sugar um, and immediate pleasures that Kit Kat has brought me. And then with translation, the same thing. I did use some translation now now let me try to make it healthier by doing other things around this little translation that I felt like I needed and that I went for it and that it was good. In this case, it's proved that sometimes translation is really good. Uh, you get, I got la serratura and difetosa and I'm really happy uh, that I have got those things. But I'm even happier that I'm not being fooled. You know, I am uppercasing them. I know that they didn't come from me. And I know that I need to do stuff if I want to have them for me. Long term. So, I hope I have clarified my thoughts on translation, how it works, and other ways of uh, making learning more um, meaningful and, um, yeah... Thank you.